Hello and welcome back to our Clinical Skills channel. My name's Dr James Gill and you've joined us for a demonstration and explanation of the spine examination. So this is going to be the first of one of our blended videos, if you will. We're going to build on the demonstration we've done previously, explaining what each step is as we go along with it. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the spine. So, my name is Dr. James Gill. Uh, I've been asked to do an examination of your spine today. So that's going to involve getting you to take off your t-shirt. We're going to have a look at how you stand and the position of your spine. We're going to palpate across your spine and then get you to do some movements. And that will also involve you lying on the bed, letting us have a look at your nerves. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. So before we go any further, could you please confirm your name and date of birth? Uh, it's David Rogerson and 16th to the 10th, 1992. Super, thank you. So to start off, do you have any problems with your arms or legs at the moment? No. And any problems with your back? Minorly. Okay, what's the problem with your back? Um, a bit of an impact in hockey, a bit of muscular, I think, pain. Okay, well, we'll have a look and see what we find. So to start off, what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to ask you to walk across the room, making sure we're getting at least five paces in. Turn and then come back, please. So looking at the gentleman walk is the first part of my assessment and I'm asking him to do five paces as that should be sufficient to plug into his normal gait pattern. So hopefully what I'm seeing is actually how the gentleman is walking rather than a self-conscious walk which may mean that we are obscuring a problem with his gait. In terms of that we've got a normal heel strike and foot lift off and I couldn't see any problems at all with the gait. So with that in mind, we're going to have a look at your overall spine. If I could get you to take your T-shirt off, please. Okay, and if you turn and just stand facing me and relax your hands by your sides. At this point, I'm having a look at the overarching appearance. So both shoulders are appearing roughly symmetrical. The left is a little bit higher than the other, but other than that, I can't see anything significant. If you could turn to face the wall for me, please. I'm doing the same again now, but now I can actually see the spine and I'm making sure that there's no problems with the musculature. Everything looks balanced and I can't see any deviations of the spine to the left or the right, which might indicate a scoliosis. So looking at the spine from behind, we need to identify the three areas um, of the spine. So we've got the cervical spine, the thoracic spine and the lumbar spine and that will correspond with the three curves that we're seeing on the spine here. Um, when we're looking at the posterior view, we want to make sure that the shoulders are equally balanced and that we can't see any scars nor any obvious muscular imbalances. And if you could now turn to face forwards, please. Here I'm looking at the three curves of the spine. We've got the cervical lordosis, thoracic kyphosis, and lumbar lordosis, which we want to uh, be able to again see um, on the um, normal spine with the various musculatures involved. None of these appear obviously exaggerated. If we've got a vertebral fracture, then any of these curves could become that much more acute. So we've had a good look over the gentleman's spine, and the orthopedic uh, examination will be look feel and move. So we've done our look very well. If you could turn to face uh, the wall opposite for me. And now we're going to palpate down the spine, starting at the top of the neck. And from there, we'll then also palpate over the muscles. So in terms of palpation over the cervical spine, we want to be pressing from the base of the skull all the way down over the um, seven uh, vertebral bodies here, keeping in mind that there are eight cervical um, nerves, but there are only seven cervical bodies. So please tell me if there's any areas of pain when we do this. So I'm using two fingers and I'm using probably um, a centimeter or so to move between each of the uh, spinous processes as I go down. That's possibly a little bit excessive, but it is meaning that I'm covering the entirety of the spine all the way down to the sacroiliac joints at the back. 
So when pressing over the spine, I will press with 10 millimeters of mercury. So my fingertip there is just turning white, suggesting that I'm putting enough pressure to elicit pain, but without being significantly uncomfortable. Was there any pain or tenderness when we did that? No. Super. After having uh, palpated over the spinous processes, looking for any pain, I can apply direct pressure over the spine with a little bit of force to see if there's any discomfort which may relate to any fractures further in from the spinous process. Was there any pain or tenderness when we did that? No. Super. We're going to do the same again now, but now I'm looking at the paraspinal muscles, those either side of the spine. I'm then going to palpate over the musculature, pressing over the trapezius on both sides, as this is often a common source of neck pain, and then pressing down the paraspinal muscles all the way down. And I'm doing small sections of the paraspinal muscles um, because it means that I can check both sides at the same time, or both sides in parallel so I'm not missing anything. Any pain or tenderness with that? No. So there are no obvious issues there. If you want to turn back to face me, and we're now going to do some movements. So I'm a bear of very little brain, so I try and keep in straight lines because it means I'm less likely to forget anything. With that in mind, we're probably going to go down the whole of the spine as the gentleman stands before we do a few bits on the couch. So having a look at the neck first, if you could put your chin on your chest, please, and then backwards. And so there's a little bit of discomfort. Whereabouts are you getting that? About here. Okay, so the centre of the back, but that didn't hurt when we palpated over there. Okay, and just with that, if you could just nod forwards and backwards for me. Okay, so that's looking at the Atlanta occipital joint. Now we need to get you to turn your head to the left and the right, please. Okay, and back to centre. And that's looking at the Atlanta axial joint. And now we're going to try and get you to put your ear to one side and then the other. Okay. And again, there's that dis dis discomfort. Is that still in the middle of the back there? Yeah, on the left-hand side slightly. Okay, so there's no obvious changes in movement, but there is what looks like a muscular discomfort as much as anything. So we've then got the thoracic spine to look at, but because of how the thoracic spine moves, I'm going to come back to that in a moment. So moving on down to the lumbar spine, if you could try and reach to one knee for me, and then to the other side. And as a gentleman is doing that, I'm looking at the movement of the lumbar spine from side to side, and that was equal. If you could turn forwards for me. Now slowly go down the, uh, the thighs to try and touch the floor for me, and then come back up again as best you can, nice and slowly. So it's important, whilst that was excellent movement, that we do that movement slowly so we don't risk any possible disc uh, problems or any muscle spasms which could cause some discomfort for the patient. Now, the reason why we didn't do the thoracic spine at this point is because of um, the movements here. So if you turn to face me, please. The thoracic spine is largely just a rotational movement. So if I get you to turn to the left for me, most of the movement from the back here is actually from the pelvis, not the spine. So we need to stabilise the spine. If you could sit on the table for me, okay. and if you put your arms across your chest, now please turn to the left, and then to the right for me. And back to centre. So as we've done that, we've stabilised the, the pelvis, meaning the rotation has to come from the thoracic vertebrae, and we can see we've got a good range of movement there. Were there any problems when you did that? Mm. Okay. So we now need to do a couple of special tests. So if, you, if I could get you to stand up again, please, and turn to face uh, the wall that way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at um, uh, what's called a Schrober's test. So on the back here, we've got the dimples of Venus. This is uh, an anatomical landmark, and we're going to get a tape measure and measure 10 centimetres up from this position and also 5 centimetres down. With the tape measure in this position, if you could bend forwards for me, as far as you can, that's fine, and then come backwards for me, and back to centre. So that 15 centimetres of measurement, 10 above and 5 below, becomes at least 20 on bending forwards. And that ability to stretch so far is an important um, marker of spinal health. 
in young men who might come in with a little bit of low back pain, we would worry about a problem with the lumbar spine there, hence we'd do Schrober's test. If Schrober's test is positive, i.e. they move forwards, the vast majority of that movement is going to come from the hips rather than the spine. So the patient can still bend forwards, but we are not going to get that same level of change. And that's a very worrying finding. That might mean an autoimmune process, such as ankylosing spondylitis, where, for want of a better phrase, the spine fuses over time in what's called a bamboo spine. But thankfully, there's none of that here. To carry on looking at the lumbar spine, if I could get you to lie in the bed for me, please. Now here we're going to see if there's any evidence of sciatica. So I'm going to get the gentleman to move his legs first. So if you could raise this leg up as high as you can. And back down again. Any problems with that? Oh. And same again here, all the way up. And back down. Any issues there? No. Now I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to put some extra force on his leg. So I'm coming up, so we should have a normal stretch for most people in the back of the leg there. And I'm just going to dorsiflex the foot, that increases the stretch here, pulling on the sciatic nerve, and if there's a sciatica, we'll get focal pain in the back when I dorsiflex the foot. Was there any problems there? Nope. So we're putting uh, dorsiflexion on the foot, which will pull down on the back of the thigh, um, causing stretch to the sciatic nerve, uh, which we can see in here, and will cause pain to the back, perhaps with pain shooting down the leg here. We can also get um, piriformis syndrome, where we've got uh, pain over the um, stretch and we can see compression of the sciatic nerve in the gluteal region, either due to inflammation of the muscles here or in piriformis syndrome, where the muscle uh, can either be running above, below or in some cases the sciatic nerve penetrating through the piriformis muscle, hence causing pain and sciatic symptoms when walking, but without the same lumbar back pain. And we'll do the same again here, up, and then pulling. Any problems with that? No. Nope. Super. Now if you could set up for me please. Because the spine is this well, big bundle of neurological cables, uh, we need to make sure that the nervous system from the spine outwards is working well. And we're going to do that by testing the reflexes. So I'm going to get my tendon hammer and we're going to start off with the upper limb. So if you just relax for me, let me take your arm out and I'm going to strike down and we've got a good movement there and I can see contraction of the triceps. Do the same again on the opposite side. Now we're not getting a huge range of movement, but I am seeing that contraction in the muscle. In terms of the bicep, I'm going to take my thumb placed in there. Okay, and we've got that reflex in the bicep there. And we'll do the same again over here. Okay, and then looking down over the wrist. And actually on this gentleman, I'm getting a larger movement there than I was further up. Okay, so we've confirmed that the upper limbs are um, effective. So ideally we should have um, the patient in uh, shorts at this point. So we're going to strike over the uh, patella tendon. Okay, and we've got a reasonable reflex there. And similarly on the other side. All right, let's get you to swing your legs up and we're going to check the final bit of the reflexes uh, looking at the ankles. So I'm going to turn the ankle outward slightly and putting a, again dorsiflexion on the ankle to strike in the ankle and there's a good movement down putting pressure on my hand. The same again on both sides. Excellent. And the final bit that we'd attempt to do is run a, uh, the fork around the base of the foot where we are getting a response. If however we found any um, reflex that didn't respond we could try and increase it with dendrastic's response. If you just swing your legs around for a second. So if we need to try and reinforce a reflex that we're not confident in seeing because it's so slight, we can try reinforcing maneuvers such as dendrastics. So if you put your hands together and pull and then close your eyes for me, and we can do the same again. We're still not getting that good reflex on the right, but we've demonstrated the reflexes nevertheless. Now, if we needed to reinforce a reflex for the upper limbs, the hands kind of going to be busy at that point. So instead, we get him again to close his eyes, but this time bite down hard, please. Okay. And we've got slightly more movement with the arm on that side. 
and again similarly a, a better um, bicep contraction over there. So uh, that would nearly complete our examination but we'd also need to check the femoral nerve. So we're all very, most people are very um, aware of the um, sciatic stretch but we can get pain down the anterior of the thigh as a result of uh, problems in the lumbar spine. So for that if you could lie forwards for me please on your front and if you could please pick, uh, pick up your uh, leg like so and pick it up and push backwards for me. Okay. And is that causing any pain in the back? No. Good. And we'll do the same again on this side. So pick up and push backwards and back down again. So if we'd had a positive uh, femoral stretch there, we'd have had discomfort as we did that. So uh, thank you very much. We haven't found anything more than uh, a slight muscular discomfort on your thoracic spine, but um, any questions for myself? No. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us this far. This is the first of our blended videos that we've done. Um, if this has been helpful to yourself, please stick a comment down below what we could do to improve things. And if you'd like us to carry on with this blended approach, having expanded from the demonstrations that we've done previously. With that in mind, thank you. Take care and we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.